So, it's not good. Um, it's a 210, obviously. I'm gonna have to get the back end off because the PTO is making funny noises. So we're gonna have to drop the hitch off, hitch in the cassette, put the rods through the back window, um, undo the link arms obviously, drop those down. Then undo all the, the, the pickup hitch, release, PTO speed. Um, I think that one tells you what gear it's in, but I'll go through that in a minute. And then any other oil feeds that go to it, and get the back end off because the problem is just in there so i'll have to get the back end all out of that into that drum move that pipe i've seen professionals do it that way so you know don't worry it'll be fine and then we can start taking things apart properly Yeah, see there, there it goes quiet, and then if you go to about there, there's a roughness. Now, there's a bridge in the back of there, you'll see when we take it off, but the pins that locate that into the hole in top of the back casting are, well, I've been told that they are like glass, in that, you know, any sort of unusual strain on this, and those will shear, and the whole lot in there will move because it holds all the gears in um, some of them you can tell it's broken that because in here that will be slightly out this side or slightly out that side and obviously the PTO won't quite be straight so hopefully seeing as mine's still set in there quite uh, square then Hopefully it's not damaged the bridge or the pins or anything like that. The good thing is, is I'm due a service on this anyway, so I don't actually... I'm not wasting any oil. I know it sounds a bit rash, but I'll probably put that in either Dad's 2040S or maybe the 6.8. Obviously I will see how many lumps of metal are in there before I do, but... But you know, it's, you know, with this economical crisis, we'll have to save everything we can. Hopefully that won't fly out here. A few moments later. What on earth is that? It's a bit of breather, I suppose. Yeah, that's empty. As soon as the pump starts winding, turn it off anyway, because you're effectively running the pump dry. But, um, yeah, it's most of the oil out. Obviously, I've got to go underneath and do the drain bungs. There are two drain bungs underneath the PTO thing, I think. There was last time. I think so. Um, so yeah, let's get the pickup pitch off. So it's two out. Of course, being a John Deere, there's six things. You can do it with a 17. PTO shield off. And then, pick a bitch cable, I think.
it is remarkably hot at the minute because it's currently we're filming and I think it's the 6th of September so there's a heat wave coming through at the moment so I am sweating at the moment you can't even see what I'm doing this just undone the nut Put that one out, put that out of the way somewhere. I think I'll try and get this, this, the bottom part of the cassette, I think is what a lot of people call it. Uh, so there's a pin at the back, so I have to crawl underneath and get that one, wherever you can see it. That split pin there, and it's got to come out this way, because you can't go on the other way because the casting's a bit lower. That pin only goes one way. So uh, I'll get under there and do that, because that'll be to try and film that but get that pin out and then we can drop the whole cassette out just remembered as i was taking the pin out there's two hydraulic hoses at the back so you'll have to undo those as well for obviously the push out hitch um, undo those hit the pin out and then we can drop it down they're just in that bucket there pins out Out. So now I'm going to undo the rest of the hitch, which we need to undo all the, there's four there, two underneath, and then another four at the back. I'll do those ones first. Battery. Oh, we should have enough battery. They must be very, very tight then, because as we all know, Milwaukee is awesome. This will make it a bit more interesting, trying to get them undone. is we'll edit, edit out the part where I'm there grunting and farting and straining with this bar and just make it out like the Milwaukee did it. Yeah. Then Milwaukee can sponsor me. Yeah, Milwaukee, if you sponsor me, I'll cut out the bit where I had to go and get a bar. But if you don't, I'm going to make you all look like a fool and leave the bit where I had to use a bar. Sounds fair enough to me. I won't even reach that one.
call the power of the Milwaukee. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I've changed those bolts. Difficult, but it's going to come in a minute. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Oh. Pebble in the way. Well, it's off. It's not in the stylish, controlled way. I was hoping, but it's off. <laughs> I do regularly clean my tractors. Uh. You didn't see this, right? This wasn't here. Now we can get to the drain bungs underneath. Little half inch plugs, fairly sure they are. Little half inch. Oh, hello. Getting near the top and it doesn't, it's not showing signs of stopping and it's coming out a lot quicker than I uh, could switch those buckets around. It's nice and warm though to make me even hotter on the hottest day of the year. Right, let's fill it up again. I can't remember how many more come out after. after it's fully drained. It's fairly clean oil, it's a bit brownish, but it is, it's every 1500 hours. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, let's leave that one under there because there will be more coming. Necessarily have to do that. Just doing that so you get a better view of me smashing my knuckles off on everything else on the back of here. I think that is the speed sensor, that one there. There's another solenoid up here. Just a plug and plug that one. And here to the other side is the big plug, that's all sort of part of one loom. Tuck that out of the way. And then the, you know, the oil feed that always gets filled right up with water every time you wash it. I said the oil feed, whatever you want to call it, the dribble pipe. Best way I can describe that. Um, what else? That one, 22. Now oh, this can be back up over there somewhere. Out the way so that can come down and flick me in the face in a minute. Oh, 
that's that one. Twenty-four. This one up here. Oh, that was just a mate of mine saying that the uh, hay that I got a bale, they actually do want to bale it today. So take the old Super 6 8 out, the little party bus, Super 6 8 with all the trimming boards on, take that one out as well. And uh, get that one out just for ease. Yeah, bailing the 6.8, living the dream. Right. So hopefully, in a minute, we can uh, get some of this. I've undone most of the bolts already. So my camera is running out of battery. Oh, and I've been wrong again. That was uh, Michael Smoridge on the phone. Convenience is I'm taking the back end of my tractor apart. Right, that should be all the bolts out now. Now's the easy slash difficult part. Oh, I'm trying to get it to let go. I can't remember how difficult it was last time. I don't. We don't have to take those apart. Don't walk those apart. Those bolts out. I'm fairly sure because that was just. That's just the top link and that goes into this back housing anyway. Alright, if I get that. Nope, that's not gonna work. Right, I'll get a pry bar or something and just get it loosened. Does help when you remember all the bolts. That's all of them in there. Is there one in there? No. I was wrong. Top two. Yeah. I'll remember now. And that was the correct use of an impact gun. It says impact, and I was impacting it. Oh, I'm hot. Hot and bothered. There we go. That's better. It's moving. Ooh. Come on. She doesn't give that ass up easy. Hanging up on the. It's hanging up on something. Come on, girl. 
Hey, okay. There it is. Whew. Cucumber dying, just at the exciting part. There we go. Now you can look into all the expensive things. And I can see nothing yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Now I shall get this in an easier place to look at it and go and charge my camera. Right, so that's it on the floor. And what I was saying earlier about the bridge, this, this whole bit is what they call the bridge. And uh, I think they're there and in there, there's two dowels that look, no, where are they? Yeah, two dowels that look like this in there, but a bit bigger, I think. <coughs> and uh, a lot of the times if the teeth chip off on these, it will shear those and the whole lot will move a bit and um, cause a complete ruckus in there. But what I have noticed as I don't know about you, but there's no teeth missing on that gear. There's no teeth missing on that gear. There's no teeth missing on that gear. No teeth missing on that gear. Uh, where's the other one? Oh, there's two in there, look. Two in there. I'm fairly sure there's none missing on that one either. Obviously this is a neutral at the minute because this here is what changes it. There's magnets in there, electromagnets, which when you push in the screen, It'll send it down through that and click it across. But the reason I took it apart is, let me grab this. It just sounds rough, doesn't it? Now, obviously, there are bearings in there, so I'll take those apart. But they look fine. I don't know, this it could be um, a simple fix. There might not be anything wrong, but I'm glad I took it apart and saw there was nothing wrong than not taking it apart <coughs> and risking it completely obliterating the back end of that. There we go, there's a diff there. I'll get my phone light in the There's your oil pump drive there that goes, because that, where is it? That one there is spinning all the time. And then the one above it goes up to your hydraulic pump, which is in the back there somewhere. Obviously your diff drives your wheels. Um, but they all look good in there. And then the, the PTO, that long shaft there goes into the back of where is it, that one there, and that hole right there, and that drives everything. Um, you can, there are more bungs back there which I'll take out, and I will take the screens out as well. Like this here, yeah, that's metal y, filing y sort of stuff. Obviously, you're going to get that with the diff. I mean, if you're pulling 30 tonne up a fairly steep hill, that's some, some pressure on that diff. But yeah, I'm, I'm a bit stumped, but next thing to do will be take the, the bridge off and have a look, see what the bearings are like right down in the bottom. Forever losing everything at the minute. Shorter than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, God, that's 
heavy. Oh, oh I forgot how heavy that thing was. One thing I did notice was this bearing race. That feels very, very loose in that housing actually. I think that bearing spun. I think that's what that is. That was incredibly loose in that housing. I don't know about you, but I don't think a bearing race should be <laughs> pushed out by hand. There is a slight roughness on that bearing as well. Uh, oh, if I remember how this bit apart. This gear, uh, last time I looked at the price, I think it was about 1900 quid. The nut shaft looks fairly scored up as well, actually. I'll bring you a lot bit closer in a minute. But that literally just fell straight off straight off then you see that I don't know if you can see it in there but that's that bearing has definitely spun on that shaft and there's rough spots in it as well I think you can see but obviously there's a bit of grit in that now Something's not right on that bottom shaft. I don't know if you saw properly just then, but that there is really not. And that just. Well, you think when that thing's got horsepowers going through it, there isn't a lot holding that on there, is there? Or stopping this from spinning on there. And the bearing's a bit rough anyway. No, no. no. Uh, I think what is next is to take this off the magnet and then I think the whole lot comes out as one go it might be rather heavy that was right. that's, that's your PTO brake there that oil will come in there and push that pad out against that but at the moment I can't see any missing teeth which is good for my wallet because like I said a minute ago that one's 1900 quid and that was th three three years ago so it's probably like what 2300 pound ish I don't know whether that bear in there well we'll either need to get this machined or get a new one I don't know but we'll I'll try and get that out now I hope you'll remember now all this comes apart. Because obviously everything just pretty much just fell apart when we took it off, so. No, no, that's off. What do we have to take? No, nope, I think we've got to take that one off as well. Oh, I remember. Oh, I remember now all of this, including that shaft. It's got to come out at the same time. Uh, remember how many shims are in the back there? I 
need that underpaid and underappreciated uh, apprentice again. Or hand pot. Hand pot is actually very helpful. Oh. There we go. Oh, one's out there. Nearly. Oh. Ow! Ow! Oh, you sod! Oh, there's that giant magnet out. It's like a big microwave magnet. Right. This is the shaft causing the problems. Or causing what might be the problems. There's nothing obvious, which is a bit annoying. But yeah. Unless you speed ring that ring with all the marks on it. It won't be that one because that's holding everything in. Last time I did this, there was not a tooth on any of the gears. It was a right mess in there. But this time, it's not so bad. Hmm. There's nothing obvious, which is a bit weird. That's obviously the selector. Hmm, very strange. Get that PTO shaft out of the way. Ooh, uh. You're never grabbing them with oily hands. Out there, it just sounds rough, doesn't it? I don't know, obviously there was a bit of grub on my hands, but... I don't know. We'll take it to Smorges and they'll tell me exactly what it's what's broken. And uh, we'll probably put it back together. So while Smorges are putting the back end of this back together, I'm just draining the hydraulic filter housing so that I can drop that one down and put a new filter in it because it is it's due a 1500 hour service. There's that one. I've also done the drop box. Drain that out. <coughs> I'm yet to find where the screens are. I can't, I can't remember where they were. I think you've either got to take one of the tubes underneath off, or it's in, it's in there somewhere, but that'll all get drained out as well. Um, and hopefully tomorrow, possibly, we'll be, they'll be bringing it out to put it back on. So I'll have my tractor back, which would be good, but you know, I'll get that filter off and the auto power filter as well. So I've um, <coughs> got a full service kit for it um, anyway. So I need to do that and the engine and the fuel and then fill this with uh, hydraulic oil, which I have half empty and a nearly brand new one there and then obviously engine on um, yeah and then 
you put it all back together. Depending who's coming, I'll either be able to talk while we're doing it because they might not want to be on film or whatever, but um, if not, I might just put on a time lapse. But uh, yeah, we'll find out. We'll see who's coming and go from there, I think, really. But yeah, I'll get those down and yeah, go from there. So I'm editing this video and I just remembered that I never actually showed putting it back together or what was what was wrong with it. The reason for that was because the lad that came out had uh, he had a wedding that day and I thought well we'd best get on and uh, get him gone before because it was on a Saturday as well they come out which is good. Get him gone and on to the wedding that he was meant to go to so I thought well I'll stuff it. I shan't bother pointing the camera at him, but yeah, this is what they replaced. Um, it was all the bearings. They didn't find any of the shafts to be worn out. That's the speed gear. Obviously, I think that got knackered when um, taking it off, but that's not the end of the world. That's the PTO seal, the main one that sticks out the back of the tractor. And then these are just just all the other bearings. We just did the bearings while we were in there. They couldn't find anything else really wrong with it and yeah it runs runs really smooth now so I think just the pitting on whatever bearings it was, whatever I can see in the light. You see yeah, see that one's like that. It's a bit rough but probably better showing you on the phone. Hey, I'm on the phone now at the moment, so that's why you can see everything. So but yeah, it was I don't know whether a bit of dirt got in the back end and has been flicked up into the bearings. Like they're made in USA bearings. I mean, there are some Chinese ones in here somewhere. Yeah, Japanese Japanese bearings, whether it was a poor quality batch of bearings or something. But yeah, that's basically all that was. And it's running fine now. I've been using it and it's it's alright. But yeah, I've no idea what it was and they don't know either. But it's not rumbling, so that's good. There was no teeth missing, which is what, which is what we like, because that was that was really expensive. That was last time, <laughs> heartbreakingly expensive. But this time, I think, I think altogether with labour parts and all everything, I think it was about fifteen hundred quid. Which sounds a lot, but even for me in a, a day's work in the workshops, ten hour day, four hundred quid just in labour. So you know. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this one, end of this video, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know where I've gone wrong throughout this whole process, <laughs> and um, I'll see you in the next one. There will be many more videos coming, I just need time to edit them, and uh, yeah, edit them. Like there's one with a straw blower, there's service on the 210, there is uh, the rest of the welding table actually. Or the welding table, because you wouldn't have seen it yet. Um, 2140, and I have bought another another little project, which, yes, I know, I've got too many already, but what can you do? It was cheap. But uh, I'll show you that one eventually. But anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Hit the subscribe button. 30, 35,000 people watched the Massey Hub. And we're still only on six or seven hundred subscribers, so come on, it doesn't cost you anything. Get on and hit the subscribe button, and then I can pay to break more things, and you can watch it and laugh at me. Anyway, thank you for watching.